Recently, we spoke to Dundee Sustainable Technologies, a company that provides eco-friendly alternatives to traditional mining processes, including cyanide-free gold extraction using its clever process. Dundee Sustainable Technologies offers the uh, glass lock process as well, which safely stabilizes arsenic from mining waste, preventing environmental contamination. Now, it's important stuff whether you are a gold mining company, a metallurgic firm, or an investor driven towards a green solutions. But introducing groundbreaking technology is just the beginning. The bigger challenge lies in adoption. So what's next for companies ready to make the shift? Well, it's a pleasure to welcome Jean-Philippe Mai, again, uh, President and CEO of Dundee Sustainable Technology. Jean-Philippe, thanks indeed for talking to us again. Hello, hello, pleasure to be here, Devin. Thank you for having me. Now that you've introduced Clever and Glasslock, I mean, what are mining companies asking for? What's next? How do they typically proceed and what steps should they be taking now? Yeah, no, that's interesting. And and uh, I have to say that it's been very positive in, in the past few years. And and believe it or not, we've been in, in, in the development of novel metallurgical processes for, for over 10 years now. And and, and over the years, people have, have really uh, begun to be more and more curious about, about processes and how can new processes benefit their project. And that's, that's actually one, one question that we get a lot is, is after the, the curiosity and the interest is, is how, how, do we, how do we proceed? How do we uh, uh, go about, about testing or, or looking at how our, uh, your process can apply on, on specific materials? So, so we definitely encourage uh, companies uh, and, and, and project developers to, to, to contact us to uh, uh, look at discussing metallurgical test work, which can really be, be catered uh, to their project, to the level of their project, so that they can test and, and really start putting some number on how our processes can be applied on, on specific and dedicated ore material. I think when they're doing that consideration, I think it's also important to look at the mining industry's current structure. I mean, do you think it's well positioned to adopt and integrate less innovative technologies or, or does it need a fundamental rethink? Well, I, I, I don't know about fundamental. I mean, we're, we're, we're only uh, here trying and, and propose uh, uh, new approaches, but uh, but I have to say it's it's difficult. Uh, that's why people are asking how do they uh, go about testing new process and and working with us because you know the industry is is made in a way that if you want to test uh, say an alternative to to cyanidation and if you go to any uh, uh, traditional and, and and global uh laboratory there's very little uh, offers in terms of alternative lixivian uh, being offered so. I, companies are, are, are led or are forced to, to just go through a standard bottle roll test. So unless there's, uh, there's a real will and, and, and efforts made for, uh, by companies to contact uh, more of, of specialty firms like us uh, and to go the extra mile to really test uh, and look for alternatives, uh, so that does that definitely could be seen as a barrier is is having a, a bit of a, a better global reach to uh, for all project developers and companies to be in a position to have more offers in terms of alternative processing uh, methods and routes for for their specific project. And, and it also goes through, through, through educating and, and, and working with a lot of different consulting firms, which often in, in our industry are positioned and, and being uh, consulted quite heavily on which direction should any metallurgical uh, test work or program uh, take. So for us, working with a lot of engineering firm, informing them on, on alternative, on our processes, I uh, may tend to having more of 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 recommendation by by these consulting groups to to look and to investigate and to invest in in uh, in alternative processes such as clever and glasslock. Now, engineering firms usually take the lead in defining projects, but they might not always be aware of alternative processes like yours. Um, how does that affect the industry shift towards cleaner technologies? Yeah, well, it, it is like it, engineering firms are, are, you know, they are a great 
uh, uh, wealth of, of, of knowledge collectively because there's a lot of individual that uh, have a broad experience. Uh, but again, it goes down to, to individuals or, or, or specialty group and, and they're not uh, necessarily all aware of, of exactly what uh, Dundee Technologies might be doing or other companies similar to us that, that are innovating, that are, are providing and offering alternative processes. So, uh, so for us, we, we, we put a lot of time at, 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 you know, conducting lunch and learns, being in, involved with and in, in, in the mix of discussions with consultants so that they are aware and that they feel comfortable at, at recommending their clients to work with us because we're, we're definitely, we're not a black box. We really believe that adoption goes through understanding. So uh, we need to dedicate some time to, to educate uh, stakeholders and all professionals that are, are active in the metallurgical space to really understand how our process works so that they feel comfortable also recommending it to their clients. So uh, I think it works both ways as well. I think, I think the industry needs to dedicate some time to, to understanding and being curious about alternative processes. I want to talk about that. I mean, do you think it's crucial for companies to bring technology providers like Dundee uh, into the conversation much earlier during project planning? I suppose you would think that's, that's, a, that's a big plus. Yeah, well, I, I, think, I think it's very important because I, uh, doing a, a, a series and doing some trade-off within your project development is important and not just looking at, at solutions or alternative process when there's an identified uh, problematic. And, and very often this is where we come in. Uh, people have done a lot of work and advanced the process to a stage where uh, it, there's a lot of money being invested on a dedicated flow sheet, but then uh, there might be some, some issues, some challenges, some lower recoveries, and then they're, they need to take a few steps back and to look at alternative processes, but yet we're, we're, we're competing uphill against a, a, a process and a, and a flow sheet which has had a lot more development, uh, as opposed to, to doing a lot of, of a series of trade-offs earlier on the project so that you can understand uh, the, the pros and the cons and the benefits of each of the approach. And that allows for, for better and, and sound decision-making and to really, I think it also de-risks the project for any stakeholder, for any investors, is making sure that, that any companies or projects has, has turned every stone and, and to make sure that, that uh, uh, the, the, the recovery process, the metallurgy aspect is also optimized because we, we tend to always lean and towards one single process as the go-to process because we've been, we've been doing this for so many years. It works, but you know, maybe there could be some alternatives that, that provide additional benefits and that can solve some, some issues down the line as well. If, if I can indulge and just throw this in, Jean-Philippe, what role do flow sheets play in determining whether a mine operates sustainably? I mean, and how can miners adapt them sooner rather than later to include greener options? Well, I, I think, you know, the, the, the flow sheet, you know, metallurgy is custom. You know, there's no two projects are the same. I think you need to adapt and to uh, define conditions which optimize uh, the recovery for uh, any given uh, ore body and, and material. And, and what we're really proning is, is efficiency, is how do we uh, provide a flow sheet which is more efficient, both in terms of, of contact time, of footprint, of region consumption, of energy consumption, and, and, and coupling all of those uh, factors uh, with really with the, the intention and, and focus and purpose of optimizing uh, the recovery flow sheet in terms of recovery and in terms of operation parameters. So uh, I think there's, there's a lot of room uh, in, our, in our industry for, to improve some of these, uh, some of these aspects, uh, notably in terms of contact time. I mean, we're, we're very patient when we have to, to wait for days for, uh, for metals to go into solution where, where there's... Uh, benefits of utilizing chemistry that has much faster kinetics where we can uh, do this in, in a matter of hours. And this translates into, into uh, a footprint uh, optimization. So I think there's a lot of room, but again, we just need to, to be curious and to look uh, at, at investigating alternative processes and, and letting the, the, 
you know, doing the work and, and letting some, some data uh, do the talking as well for, for sound decision making, for, for solutions to, to be pushed forward. Which brings me to my final point as I let you go, Jean Philippe. I mean, very often, and you see this on the ground, companies will wait to embrace these alternatives up until traditional methods just become unworkable. And, and that's what you tend to want to avoid, right? Well, it's, uh, it, again, as I, as I said before, sometimes when you, you know, people are, 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 are forced to look at alternative when there's challenges, when there's issues. Uh, but I think there's, there's a lot of curiosity now in the industry. I think, uh, you know, the, 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 the narrative, the interest, uh, has changed, you know, over the years. And, and I think people are, are a lot more open and are welcoming innovation. Uh, even if it's a step change and not just, you know, continuous improvement. Uh, and, and I think. It's also, it could be used as a tool for, for project developers that really want to, uh, uh, to set uh, themselves and, and being different at, at promoting efficient uh, processing, uh, sane environmental and operational practices. So, uh, so I guess, yeah, I think, I think there's, there's, it, it's good timing. There could be a, a, a lot of benefits and, and doing the trade-off, like any part of project development, doing some trade-off and looking at every possible uh, option out there, I think it's just good good practice and good management for for any uh, decision makers and any any companies uh, that are that are promoting and developing projects. Yeah, well, it certainly is a very interesting route. Well, thanks very much indeed, Jean Philippe, my president and CEO of Dundee Sustainable Technologies. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us again. Thank you very much, Aaron. Always a pleasure. Thank you.